Welcome to the Guide Exile. Here we're going to start a very long series of guides to explain what is possible in the endgame of Path of Exile. In this first part, we are going to go over how to transition from the story mode of Path of Exile into its endgame, as well as give a basic outline of what currently exists within it. It will almost be in the same vein as my beginner's guide, but now for the more advanced endgame. Now of course, Path of Exile is a constantly evolving game, so there will be many changes and additions to the game over time. With this series set up, I hope that I will be able to be both adding more guides over time and adjusting existing ones as time goes on. I would also like to deeply thank Ka Car Carve. Oh no. Car Carvu. Car um. Mm -mm. Just, just say Carve, okay? Right. Well, for all of his help on these guides, he is truly the man with all of the information on the hidden mechanics of not only the Atlas, but every other portion of the game. If you ever have a question on a mechanic that I have not covered, most definitely head over to either of Carve's Twitch or YouTube channels. There you will be treated to a full lecture on your inquiry, along with endless examples. If you wish to get a snippet of information, you can also follow him on his Twitter, where he is forced to keep it short and sweet. Finally, if you are really in need of direct contact, you can join his Discord to hassle him directly. So with that, let us get right into the series. Once you have worked your way into the later acts of Path of Exile, you will begin to see these special items named maps being dropped from monsters. Path of Exile's endgame is heavily tied around these map items, along with most of its content incepting from them. Maps are small, self-contained items that can be crafted on with most all currencies, but only used within a special map device, once you have completed the story. So for now, just hold on to all of these items until you reach the end of the story. Once you reach the end of the story here, you will then talk with Zana in the epilogue. She will start you on your endgame journey with a main questline. Zana is a prominent and important feature of the endgame, and due to this I will be examining her further within her own guide. For now, Zana will start by directing you to the Templar Laboratory which houses the special map device. This device can also be found in operational condition in the Chamber of Sins in Act 7 where you actually use a map device during the questline, as well as Zana's master table within hideouts. This is the main tool that you will use to access the majority of Path of Exile's endgame. But of course, we will need something to use within it, and those are the maps that you have been receiving during the leveling and from Zana's initial quest. A map is an item that opens six portals to another zone when activated within the map device. The location of the map within the device sockets does not affect this activation. The zone is full of regular monsters with different varieties along with a boss and sometimes numerous bosses, all of which drop items, currency, and more maps, letting you perpetuate through the endgame. The monsters and drops within these zones can be modified and customized by crafting the map with currency prior to activating it within the map device. Crafting will add more affixes to the map based on rarity so with the same rules as regular items, which can also be found in my item guide. Maps come in many different tiers which dictate their zone's level and affix tiers, that can be rolled on them, similar to item level on gear. When you enter a map, a portal is used, so you'll only have six entries into the map before you can no longer enter it. Using a portal scroll in the map will not use any external entry portal into the map, it will only change the location of the exit portal from the map. The tile set and layout of the map is determined by the map base, with each map base having its own. For example, the desert map uses tile sets that are similar to the dried lake in Act 4, while the beach map uses tile sets similar to the beacon in Act 6, and they will always choose to use these tile sets. The layouts of maps are randomly generated like other zones in Path of Exile, and will not always be the same upon creating new maps of the same base. However, for the most part, maps will always have a core recognizable layout with small variations. Now to baffle you even further, there is a map of all these map items called the Atlas, which describes and connects all of these maps together in a cohesive story. The Atlas can be accessed by the default key G. Initially this map will be mostly blank and undiscovered until you explore the maps that are within it. 
This is the core of the endgame system, and it has many, many interactions and mechanics, such as cartographer sextants, map shaping, influence, and strongholds, just to name a few. For now, it is important to note that this is the main controller for how and which maps you will get back from monster drops. Another very important note is that the Atlas can and is generally reshuffled every expansion. Read this as major patch. So in this guide series, there may be a few different variations of the Atlas shown due to the reshuffling that occurs about every three months. Luckily, the shuffling only changes where each map resides and what tier it is. It does not change the core mechanics of the Atlas inherently. The Atlas mechanics are changed apart from the reshuffling. So the examples given within the video series are all still correct mechanically, it is just the map names or tiers that have shifted around. As you complete maps, that is, killing the boss of the maps, those maps will then be filled in on the atlas and become available to drop from monsters within the respective level ranges of that map tier. Along with a regular completion of maps, you can also do their bonus objectives as listed on the atlas tooltip of the map to gain an atlas completion bonus. That greatly enhances the chance of you getting higher tier map drops. Beyond the basic monsters and unique bosses of each map, there are even deadlier bosses lurking within the atlas itself. As you may have noticed, the maps within the Atlas path to a central convergence point and grow in monster level as they go there. At this convergence point, the ultimate heart of the Atlas, there is the main antagonist and creator of the mapping system, the Shaper. He is a force to be reckoned with, requiring the gathering of four fragments from his guardians prior to accessing his encounter. However, there is also a counter force to the Shaper that is the Elder. His base encounter is found through the influence on maps within the Atlas. The Elder Encounter is more modifiable, generally easier, and cheaper to get into, as he can be spawned on any tier of your Atlas, letting you choose the difficulty. However, the ultimate fight is Uber Elder, which faces you against Elder and Shaper at the same time, in the same arena, at the highest monster level zone. These are just a few of the endgame bosses that are contained within the Atlas, as there are plenty of other bosses outside of the Atlas, such as Edziri or Breach Lords, and there are sure to be more of both types as time goes on. For each of the bosses that I have mentioned here, I do have a guide on each of them explaining how to spawn them, prepare for them, what moves they perform, and how to best go about defeating them. So within this series, we will touch on the viability of these bosses in terms of their reward and strategy integration into the endgame atlas system. Well, with that massive information dump, we are now ready to dive into Path of Exile's endgame, exploring each of these topics in more depth. Let's first start our journey with the basics of the mapping system and then dive further into the advanced strategies of the endgame. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one, Exile.